Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody, wherever you are. A very warm welcome to our conference, Working Time Reduction and Climate Crisis. Due to the corona crisis, we are meeting in this online format and not in the rooms of ETUI, of the European Trade Unions Institute as in Brussels, as originally planned. I am Margareta Steinrücke from the working group Arbeit fair Teilen of Attack Germany, together with Adrien Tussaud from Réseau Roosevelt, Aidan Harper from the New Economics Foundation and others. We are coordinating the European Network for the Fair Sharing of Working Time that is organizer of this conference. The Rosa Luxemburg Foundation Brussels is supporting us very generously. Without its support, the network could not exist. Many thanks. Also many thanks to the ETUI for its support for this conference. This network has the goal to connect organizations, initiatives and persons from science, politics, trade unions, social movements, and others around the question, what's going on with working time reduction in Europe? And how can we better coordinate and promote these trials? It began to work in 2013 with a big conference in Strasbourg and is organizing every second year a conference for this behalf. We are proud to say that the network has in the meanwhile around 60 members from 15 European countries. The youngest is Iceland. This year, we want to exchange and discuss about the contribution which working time reduction can make to fight the climate change. At the moment somewhat covered by the Corona crisis, the climate crisis is the deepest crisis and the most urgent to fight for the whole mankind. And studies like the one our member Philip Fry made for the Autonomy Institute, it's called the ecological limits of working time, show that when we want to reach the 1.5 degree goal of Paris, we have to reduce our working time to around 10 hours per week. So working time reduction is a crucial and constitutional part of the fight against the climate crisis. But also for the just transition in all the climate destroying industry, we need a strong working time reduction to save, respectively give back jobs to the workers who will lose their old ones. Here, the trade unions are specially demanded as they are the main actor in the field of working time reduction. The demand of the eight hours day was founding the 1st of May as Labor Day. At the moment, we have a running big experiment with working time reduction within the Corona crisis. The so-called Kurzarbeit or short time work is a working time reduction for saving workplaces already successful in the finance crisis 2009. But the relationship ship of trade unions to the climate issue and the climate movement is not a simple one. Often the conservation of jobs at any price for the concrete workers is nearer than the long time prospective for the whole mankind. There are no jobs on a dead planet, it's true but not easy to bring in the head of people with concrete fear for their existence. But there are trade unions 
that are trying to bring together these two questions. I'm very glad to welcome Sophie Jenneke from IG Metall, which has fought successfully for working time reduction in 2018 and made the social ecological transformation to its main issue for the next years. And also, for example, Jean Sweeney from the Trade Union for Energy Democracy. He will join us tomorrow. The TUED is a worldwide network of trade unions which explicitly fight for the workers and the climate or environment perspective. The trade unions are a very important player for the working time reduction also in relation to the fight against the climate crisis. But without the huge commitment of all the other movements, climate movements like Fridays for Future, social movements like Attack and Rachel Roosevelt, women's movements, move, movements of unemployed, of people in science, politics and churches and many others, they will not succeed in the fight for working time reduction. So we have here in this conference a lot of other wonderful speakers from science, from politics and social movements and other trade unions I welcome hereby. Many thanks for your commitment and your contributions. I wish us an interesting and productive conference and pass the word now to Andreas Thompson head of the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation Brussels, and to Philippe Pochet, director of ETUI, for a welcome address. And afterwards to my colleague, Adrien, who will explain us the agenda and the proceedings. So, Andreas, it's your turn. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much uh, indeed. Um, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a real pleasure to have this uh, um, conference here and uh, to continue with the cooperation with the network, even now, if this uh, or has to be unfortunately digital. And I'm really hoping that uh, uh, we can meet you and we can meet again, uh, maybe next year, maybe then actually in Brussels and in presence. So this is, uh, the whole thing is about work time reduction. So I believe, uh, a uh, welcoming address uh, should be quite brief, um, um, and then I will try uh, to do this as brief as possible, but still um, I want to stress how important the cooperation and the whole issue um, for us in, uh, in Brussels and for the Luxembourg Foundation is. Um, <clears throat> I said we uh, might meet again next year in Brussels or somewhere else, but still we don't know how the crisis uh, we are living in now will develop further. And it's not only obviously a medical uh, crisis, it is a severe economical crisis, it is a social crisis. And this is uh, a crisis which is now framing everything, literally everything we are doing uh, um, in politics and developing uh, um, progressive and leftist concepts. So it will also shape uh, discussions on the question of uh, work time reduction. It will, will of course, also shape uh, discussions on Green New Deal or everything else. Um, since this crisis now frames everything, it is more, much more important to further develop progressive ideas and concepts like uh, um, work time reduction. And um, I'm not, um, I'm actually not one of them uh, saying uh, the crisis now, this kind of crisis now creates uh, large opportunities and chances for the left. It is as, as always, it is a question, um, it is a question of uh, the relation of powers and it is a question of the actual social struggles. It is a question of the ideas and the concepts um, which will give a direction for the future. But we also know Deep crises often lead to changes, uh, to paradigmatic changes in economics, in social uh, politics. Uh, so there might be a chance in it also uh, for the question um, uh, for work time reduction. Uh, this severe economical crisis can also, and I believe easily, 
uh, lead to a, a massive return of neoliberalism or even worse. So it is still a question how we approach the crisis and which kind of concepts and ideas we develop. Um, but at the same time now, we are seeing in this crisis, in this actual crisis, how important state intervention and regulations actually are. So this is uh, something that could give us hope in uh, many aspects. As I said, um, it is as always, future is unwritten. And it is the question, um, uh, what the several forces, but also progressive and leftist forces now find ways and directions and concepts and ideas uh, to take part in the struggle for the future. And there, uh, transnational organizing and discussion like you and we are doing here is something to give us hope and perspective uh, for the futures. Because still, the struggles have to be led locally or on a national basis. But the exchange of experiences, the solidarity across the borders um, is a lot. Um, and it can lead to much more. So I'm very, very glad to see that uh, the network is not even that impressive wide, European wide and also worldwide, I believe. Um, it is also broadening and you have new members also from, uh, from countries not being part of the European Union, like from Iceland. And this is also a, a good development. Um, in the end, and also in the beginning, uh, the struggle for work time reduction is one of the most, most original and genuine struggles of workers' movement. It is directly addressing the relations between workforce and capital. It is a struggle connected to the question of distribution of profits or respectively surplus value to self-determination. And in the end, it's also a struggle uh, connected to the question of sovereignty. This is why we, as Brussels Office of Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, will definitely stay with this issue and um, with this important cooperation we have uh, with the network. Now, it should, it, uh, it should have been brief, and it will be brief. Um, so it's a special um, pleasure for me uh, to give the word then uh, to Philippe Pochet of Etui. Um, um, it, is, it is very important that uh, organizations uh, like uh, the European um, um, trade unions organizations are involved in this, uh, this mm -hmm. uh, um, struggle. And the last word I, <laughs> I have to say, um, I wish, of course, you, us, very much success with this uh, uh, conference, fruitful exchange and discussions. And again, hopefully meet again in Brussels someday, hopefully next year. Thank you very much. Yes, that's, uh, I think it's my turn. Uh, the, um, um, as Margarita was saying that uh, we should have the pleasure to meet in the premise of the ETUI and to inaugurate a new, new uh, hybrid room that we have in the ground floor and. Uh, have this conference uh, and have all the discussion and the important uh, informal uh, discussion, but no, it's the, the new reality and uh, we have to do that uh, online. We are used to do that, but we still miss the, the quality of this kind of informal conversation. Even with online, we can continue uh, the conversation and this conversation is particularly uh, important. And I'm very happy uh, from the Institute is the first time that we have to, uh, uh, we support uh, formally uh, this, uh, the, this network, the attack, the Réseau Roosevelt, and uh, we are happy also to work with the uh, Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung uh, in Brussels, uh, because I, I think also it, it shows the variety of point of view and the possible collaboration that we, we need uh, on uh, the topic, and I will return to that uh, at uh, uh, the end. Uh, for us at the Institute, it's a very important topic. It will be in a world program and uh, it will be uh, also in the perspective of, of climate change. But uh, we, uh, with all the crisis, uh, I think that's the, well, what uh, all we are on the left and the, in the various part of the left, we are generally uh, thinking that we will change the paradigm and that we will uh, win something. And the last crisis was unfortunately uh, what we, we, we did. And I would like to, to start 
put, putting that in perspective because uh, and was set by 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 the previous intervention too uh, i think that the out of the covid uh, the kind of socio-ecological transition that we will discuss now and and uh, the the impact or, or, or the possibility to to develop with necessity to develop reduction of working time i think it's uh, just one of the the possible scenario that we have uh, on the table and uh, the first one is the uh, the return uh, uh, of uh, austerity and uh, the uh, never ending neoliberalism uh, is also on the table uh, and not perhaps in short term but uh, uh, let's uh, be sure that it will not return but we have also uh, other scenario that i i think uh, could be also rather frightening i, I call that the authoritarian scenario uh, and could be linked with the green uh, approach is the Chinese. Uh, okay, that's where we protect our citizens uh, and uh, in an authoritarian state, including to have a, uh, an ambitious goal uh, for uh, uh, cl climate change and uh, CO2 uh, emission. And finally, uh, this kind of uh, full consumption, uh, all Keynesianism uh, scenario that we return to uh, spending, spending, and we don't care, take, take flight, take care. Uh, that's important for growth, uh, etc. So, uh, I think that we, we, what we we will discuss uh, on the two days uh, is one of the scenario, and uh, uh, we have to be uh, very cautious uh, to avoid the the other scenario too. Uh, what uh, seems to me uh, important, uh, uh, starting for out of the COVID uh, crisis, uh, is the climate change strategy and the change in the climate change uh, strategy. And I, I think that it's nice to put a new figure and uh, to say, okay, we move to 40 to 55 to 60% of, of reduction uh, at European level, and we can put a nice figure. But if you take that seriously, and we have to take that seriously, because if we don't go in that direction, uh, the, the consequences could be uh, dramatic or will be dramatic. Um, it, it means that we will have uh, a rapid change in the, 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 the production. It will be uh, not a smooth transition. We can call that just transition. Everyone likes something just, but it will be a just transition. It will be a just transition in a short time and with a lot of, of, of change. And uh, there is some discussion here. Uh, also uh, about the car industry, but the car industry will uh, be uh, affected dramatically uh, and the workers in the car industry if we take that seriously, because we will not go for hybrid and then uh, electric car, we, we will have to accelerate to electric car, which have uh, some consequences uh, on the, 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 the workforce uh, and not only the workforce for the electric car, but uh, I think nobody is dreaming to have a traffic jam with the electric car. So we will have another mobility. It's not the goal to have traffic jam with the uh, electric car, perhaps in my third scenario, full consumption, that's kind of some dream to have that, but that's not our goal. So I, I take a, a sector with 10 million workers. It, it's not the, the, the small sector of, of, of coal, which is 400,000. That's kind of uh, statistical error in, in the, the when, when, when you come. And that is just one example. What I, I want to say uh, now is that we, we, we are changing and we will change if we go much quicker and that will be much more difficult than, than before because in 30 years we reduce by 25 percent the emission and now in 10 years we have to reduce by 30 percent. So when we have that what are the the, the solution and I think what should be uh, uh, and that's where for me uh, and for the Institute of Working Time is coming back. What could be the, the, the kind of the mark, or what the brand, what, what we want to achieve? And you can see what you, all the, the variable, but I, I think on working time is the most important, is the most distinctive that will give the direction that we want to achieve for the future to avoid also the, the other scenario, the, 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 the austerity, austerity scenario, the, the authoritarian scenario, or the uh, full consumption scenario. And that's why I, I think it's it's important. It's important, but it will not go between without fight, without difficulty, and without uh, discussion. And then I, I finish uh, with that. 
and and that's why I, I think this this uh, conference is so important because uh, as well, well, was said by the two previous uh, speaker, uh, we need to to expand the conversation. We we need to to uh, to to create consensus, and we we need also to have conflict. I think that there is no problem for trade unions to have conflict, but we have to to create consensus, understanding, and also a, a, a way. Uh, forward, uh, and I, I think that's important. That uh, the most important trade union in Europe, uh, at least by the numbers, uh, IG Metall, uh, but certainly with the, also the, the the importance that this trade union has in the the world debate in Europe, it is returning and pushing the the, the working time uh, in uh, such uh, circumstances because it is no longer kind of idea of uh, some kind of idealist uh, people that have nice idea but uh, difficult to put it in place it could be also uh, pushing by real actor having some leverage uh, on the situation so thank you uh, we are very happy to to contribute on that and as everyone said uh, we hope that you will uh, come in the uh, ETI premise it will not be uh, for the inauguration of, of, of this room i hope that we will have uh, other events before but uh, next year which also show that we would like to to continue with comparison and this first step that we have now thank you yeah thank you so much philip Poche. and uh, now i will give the word to adrian he will explain us now the proceedings of the whole conference. Yes, uh, welcome everyone. So uh, on today's program, we will have two roundtables. Uh, one roundtable is about the recent example of initiative and experimentation on work and time reduction in Europe. So Philippe was talking about uh, IG Metal, so we have a presentation from the IG Metal experimentation and from others from Belgium and Iceland. And uh, the idea of this one table is to uh, give concrete example and uh, show that something is moving and uh, it, it, it's not a, like you said, an utopia, but a concrete idea that, can, that could have a real impact. Uh, after this one table, we will have a second round on table on the place on work time reduction in the post growth society. So with three speakers, we had Juliet Shaw, Will, uh, Will Strong and Bit Zippelman. And the idea is to replace um, or to debate about this, uh, this vision of, future, of uh, the future we want uh, and what is the place uh, of work time, or of work time reduction in our society. And um, to all the, 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 the challenges and the that you, you have mentioned, uh, Andreas and Philippe, and we have to, 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 to challenge and uh, to, to move forward. Uh, and uh, bit the, so that's one table will be will uh, the space to have that discussion and to uh, give some guidelines about it. again and welcome to our first panel on the recent examples of initiatives and experimentation of the working time reduction in Europe. We took an um, exemplaric selection of uh, examples from Germany, from Iceland and from Belgium. And um, in this case, we have to organize the panel in uh, uh, the following way. We first will give the word to Sophie Jenicke from the IG Metall. Um, she will speak and afterwards we will uh, discuss um, uh, directly her uh, contribution. Then, because uh, Sophie has to leave us um, rather early, around I think uh, 2.30 or 2.40. And then we will go on uh, with Gudmundur and uh, uh, 50 minutes speech and uh, um, uh, 50 minutes discussion. Then with Maxim, uh, the same procedure. And at the end, we have a half an hour for the general discussion. Okay, so uh, I now proudly present uh, 
Sophie Jenneke. She is um, uh, working in the department for collective, collective bargaining uh, of the IG Metall and uh, they're responsible for all the questions of working time. And uh, IG Metall is um, the, I think, always biggest and mightiest trade union of the world. And uh, um, in the year 2018, uh, the IG Metall really began after uh, long silence of more than 20 years to uh, go on with the fight for working time reduction and successfully uh, reached some uh, uh, agreement on this uh, uh, topic. And uh, now in the crisis of Corona, but uh, that was uh, um, before already a crisis in the automobile industry, uh, again, the IG Metall is thinking about working time reduction in a, a more general way. Now I give the word to Sophie Enk. Yes, hello everybody and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a real pleasure for me uh, to tell you something about IG Metall working time policies. Yes, and I have to apologize in advance that I have to have uh, uh, to leave earlier because uh, I have another panel at three in another online Zoom conference. Uh, so I'm doing a bit of conference hopping during these days. Um, I will try to make my screen visible. Wait. Yep. Uh, can you see it? Yes, okay. Uh, I can somebody say something because I can't hear you anymore. Yes, yes, we ah, perfect. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let me start first and then if I talk too much, please stop me. Um, yeah, maybe uh, in the beginning a few general words. Um, as Margarete introduced, uh, IG Metall did uh, a lot of working time policy, but not always, let's say. We had the big times of uh, working time policies in the 80s where IG Metall uh, went on strike for the 35 uh, hour week very successfully in Germany. So now we have a weekly working time of 35 hours in the uh, German metal industry. And um, then, yeah, there was a, a, a period of silence around working time policy, I would say. Um, this had several reasons, um, because I think uh, you have waves of, of issues in, in trade union policies. And after reaching the 35 hour week uh, in the west of Germany, uh, you have to say, um, IG Metall did a lot of other things. We invented new uh, wage systems in the metal industry, so um, we did a lot of other things. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, working time policy went from the collective, uh, from, from a collective issue, from a trade union issue to uh, an issue more dealt with in the companies, uh, which meant that we, we faced a lot of flexibilization uh, of working time in the companies, working time uh, became longer than before and uh, also important working time in the companies became more unhealthy. So we had an increase of uh, unhealthy sh shift systems, for example. So um, yeah, a lot of, of uh, um, developments in working time which uh, have not been really uh, in favor for the workers. So um, yeah, voices in IG Metall uh, became louder and louder uh, to, to um, go back to, to working time policies, um, but it was not so easy to be honest. Um, and IG Metall made a lot of effort uh, during the last, I would say seven until five years uh, 
to get working time as an issue back uh, on the agenda. We did two big uh, surveys. Uh, the, the second one, especially on working time. Um, we did a big working time campaign, uh, which led into a negotiation round uh, in 2018, uh, where we came to new regulations on working time, uh, as uh, Margarita already mentioned. Um, we have to say that uh, this was not easy for us. Uh, we needed industrial action, we needed strikes to achieve those new regulations, and um, I, I will come back to this, but um, I think what was the most important for the people um, was to get more uh, self-determination uh, on, on, on their working time again, um, and then we reached this um, this result you see there, maybe uh, you remember them because I presented it in the last meeting uh, of the network already. That's why I want to keep it short. Um, we got a new regulation that certain kind of people, people who are uh, taking care of children, of elderly or people who are in shift work, uh, get a choosing option. They can choose if they take uh, some kind of annual extra money or if they uh, take eight days off instead. And we achieved the right to reduce full time and go back on uh, go back on, on full full time after that. Um, and yeah, this were were the two options we achieved. And um, yeah. Now we are on a different point in the debate again. I mean, we are only two years later, uh, but as mentioned before, we are now in one of the biggest crises uh, you, you can imagine and uh, discussion on working time and especially on working time reduction is uh, back on our agenda. Mm. You can see there, um, that in, in 2018, we had a focus on individual needs. Uh, in, in, reduct, uh, in, in the reduction of working time, because people said we want to have more self-determination uh, with our working time. And now, uh, because of the crisis, we are going a bit back uh, on a collective view on working time. Um, yeah, but I will come back to this later and look at the time. Um, so what we can say after our uh, negotiation round and collective bargaining struggle in 2018 was um, that achieving those uh, new new options for workers on working time strengthened the self-confidence of our colleagues in the companies and also strengthened IG Metall as an organization. That has also to do something with the fact that uh, we had industrial action on this because I think if you have industrial action on an issue then the workers uh, are very proud on it and they are, they are taking those regulations much more um, as their own ones because they have been fighting for it. Um, yeah, and what we also achieved is that after a period uh, of, of uh, working time being seen as a very difficult, a very uh, uh, yeah, heavy issue, let's say, for uh, uh, shop stewards that um, we now uh, saw that working time is again a successful field of action uh, in the companies and also for IG Metall. And the new options are broadly used. In 2019, 260,000 workers used this option of eight free days uh, instead of money. And in 2000, more already, uh, more than 340,000. Um, so you see that uh, workers are very keen on, on getting more free days, uh, even if they lose money, because uh, they, can, they can change the money into free days. Uh, what is interesting in this is that uh, in this um, changing option, money into time, time is more worth than money. Because if you would uh, simply count the money you can uh, change into time would be six days, but people get eight days. Um, so this is also part of wage compensation, let's say. We imagined to get more, we didn't, but 
at least we get something. Um, and the reduced full time is also used by around 10,000 workers annually. This is not so much like the other option, of course, but it's good for those who would need it. So this is what we did two years ago. Um, and if I'm talking about that, I have the feeling I'm talking about something historic because we are now on a completely different point in our discussion, to be honest. Um, so um, what are the perspectives of perspectives of working time policy for IG Metall, how to continue. Um, for IG Metall, it is clear that uh, we are further going for co uh, either collective and individual options to reduce working time. We discussed this in our cong Congress last year and uh, it was clear that we will go for this further. Um, but now we have three big uh, challenges, let's say, um, which, which determine our discussion about uh, working time. Uh, the first one is, of course, the digital, ecological and social transformation, which affects, uh, it was said before, a lot of our sectors very, very heavily. Um, if we talk in the in the automotive industry or in the in the supplies industry about ecological uh, and digital transformation, we are talking uh, about a, a huge, a, a really huge transformation with um, with a lot of of, of uh, impacts for the workers, of course. Um, so this is a bit the the midterm, long term perspective we have. Uh, second perspective is, of, co of course, that we are now in a deep and worldwide economic crisis. Um, and those two things coming together, we as IG Metall are facing very concretely a lot of struggles in companies for employment and for the future of sites. Um, because um, you can see in this picture that we are discussing now about a loss of 220,000 uh, jobs in the in the metal sector. Uh, we collected the announce of layoffs of big companies and these are only the big companies you see here. Um, it started end of last, mid of last year, end of last year um, that uh, big companies started to announce layoffs and um, it was because the crisis began, let's say, but I think those layoffs uh, had to do a lot with the transformation which is going on and that they knew they wouldn't need uh, so many workers in the, in the future. Um, and you see, if you, if you uh, count them all together, that we are talking about 220,000, uh, a loss of 220,000 jobs it's not clear that this will come, of course. It's only what they announced. And now uh, we are discussing and fighting about that, let's say. Um, but this is a challenge for us as trade union, of course. Um, so um, our perspective is now uh, to say again very loudly that working time reduction is an instrument to safeguard employment. And uh, this, it's an instrument for the current crisis as well as for the transformation, which is uh, a more longer or midterm issue because the transformation will lead to more productivity in the companies. I mean, that's, that's the goal of the whole thing. That's why they are doing it. Um, and it will of course also to lead, uh, to lead to overcapacities in the companies. And working time uh, reduction can safeguard employment in the longer run via the distribution of the remaining work to more, more workers. Um, but for us as trade union, of course, it's very important to uh, always to say that uh, no matter about which kind of working time reduction we are talking, workers must be able to afford it. So uh, it's not an issue for us to say we reduce working time um, without any wage compensation. Um, so in, uh, in last summer, IG Metall made a proposal which was discussed very broadly in, in the uh, public uh, and in the media. 
and we proposed uh, an option for companies with employment problems to reduce working time to four, four days per week with at least partly wage compensation. Um, to say it clearly, it's not a collective uh, reduction of working time for everybody to a four days working week. We are discussing about an option for companies with employment problems to do this. Um, yeah, why we are saying that maybe I can, I can tell something uh, about that later. Um, and um, as, I, as I mentioned here, we are talking about uh, a model of four days and uh, eight hours working day. That would mean uh, 32 hours per week. Yeah, um, the main arguments uh, that we discuss in, in the trial for that proposal is that this was, would be an answer to the structural change in the automotive and supply sector because we say transformation must not lead to mass layoffs but to work for everybody. Um, and of course, in the current crisis, um, it's also a reason for us that industrial jobs and companies uh, can be saved via shorter working time because to save the, the industrial structure of, a, of an economy uh, is for us uh, the key for working uh, economy in the future. And third argument, of course, an improved work-life balance for the workers, because we still see that work, full-time workers have the wish to work shorter uh, due to a better work-life balance. And uh, last but not least, less, commute, uh, uh, less commuting, more climate protection. Uh, there are studies, I think this one is not the only one, that um, if only 10% of the workforce would stay at home one day per week, uh, that would mean a reduction of 850 million kilogram uh, CO2, plus less stress for the workers in the traffic and lower cost for commuting. So this could be uh, actually uh, a win-win situation. There are a lot of more arguments, of course, but uh, due to the time, I, I will stop with those four uh, and we can talk about the others later. Um, so what is important for me here is that to, 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 to make clear that, of course, IG Metall is one uh, of the organizations saying we need working time reduction uh, to safeguard jobs. Um, but it's important to think uh, this, all the struggles for working time reduction together. And you see that, for example, uh, the, the climate aspect is one of our main arguments to reduce working time. So we try to, to get things together, to get different uh, discourses together, and also um, to, to link to the, to the progressive discourses uh, which we have in the society. And I think uh, the one of the climate protection is one of the most important, uh, most important at the moment. Um, we got good media response in the in the public for for this proposal, and of course we had a broad discussion in IG Metall and within our members and in our collective bargaining bodies. And we are discussing currently uh, in our collective bargaining uh, bodies, which means in the in the commissions uh, of of the uh, shop stewards meeting and discussing uh, for which demand we will have in the next collective bargaining round, if we want to have this, uh, this proposal as a demand for the next negotiation, our negotiations will start in December and will then uh, go into the next year. So this is an open question at the moment, but uh, I think we will do something on that in the next collective bargaining round. And of course, we get harsh critics from the employers. There was um, the, the, the boss of, of Gesamtmetall of the Employers Federation who said, this is poison for the metal industry. And the other interesting um, statement was uh, from an from um, employers uh, federation from Bavaria who said, yes, this would be a possible option, but of course, only without wage compensation. So you see which struggle we will have to fight if we are going for that. Um, yeah. And this is my last point. We are going now into the negotiations in the metal sector. Uh, these negotiations will be 
very challenging, let's say, because uh, the, the, the issues are big and we have to do all this under the corona conditions. And of course, this is something completely new for us. I mean, to do industrial action uh, under these conditions of uh, people not being allowed to meet uh, with a lot of people and uh, all, the, all the fear people have or the restrictions we have, it will be, well, a very interesting experience how to do a collective bargaining round, especially uh, in such a situation and with such issues for us uh, this year and next year. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Sophie, for this very interesting and uh, very uh, actual and concrete uh, um, contribution. Um, I think uh, I have a lot of questions um, directly on the concrete uh, circumstances of this uh, um, now going on um, bargaining uh, round. But first, we have a question uh, to you uh, from Manuela Kloch uh, from Rosa Luxemburg Foundation uh, too. She is asking, how could we make sure that the working time reduction in Germany does not lead to relocation of automotive production to Eastern Europe? And yeah. how do we need an European approach? And who could be possible allies in this fight? Yeah. Um, yes, of course, we need a European approach. That's why I'm here, of course. Um, and uh, IG Metall is also a member of, of the uh, Industrial Federation of Industrial Europe. Uh, this is our uh, European Federation. And uh, in this, uh, in Industrial Europe, we also have very big uh, discussions about the question of working time reduction and uh, about the, the issue of that uh, actually a lot of unions are discussing now uh, to reduce working time. The problem is, uh, a crisis is always a very difficult situation to reduce working time because we have uh, we don't have so much uh, instruments of pressure towards uh, the the employers because actually if you go for working time reduction um, you have to do industrial action and this is all uh, this is easier in a situation uh, where. Uh, where the economy is going well, because then uh, workers have uh, much, much more pressure than, than they have in this situation. So I think it's a difficult discussion. It's a difficult situation for struggle. Um, and of course, we can't uh, make sure that this will not lead to relocation. But I only can say that um, this model we proposed is also a model which is affordable for the employers because of course the employers are also saving money if they reduce working time, which partly wage compensation, because they are saving money for uh, restructuring plans. They are saving money for acquisition of, of people um, when the crisis is over and they, they have to, to get back the, um, the well-educated people. Um, so, we think this is affordable and um, we made the experience also that you never can completely uh, avoid relocation um, and of course this is one thing uh, which the employers always uh, try to threatening the workers we will relocate but on the other hand uh, we are in touch with our sister trade unions in the other countries uh, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not so easy, but uh, it's it's fact that we have to do something on that. Um, yeah, so far to this. Okay, and uh, uh, just in the moment we have in Germany strikes in other uh, branches who are not so well organized as the metal, uh, IG Metall, in the public uh, traffic and in the, in the uh, um, hospitals, for example, and they are doing it even if the situation is very difficult and uh, they have support of others and, uh, and so far I think it's possible to do something. Okay, so I come to the second question. Um, what models uh, they might have in mind when it comes to the partial compensation of pay? 
the IG Metal is demanding a partial compensation in pay, and uh, how is the concrete um, uh, thinking about it? Yeah. To be honest, that's not figured out at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I, that's uh, this is the thing uh, the struggle will will be about, <laughs> um, and it's not only a question of models but also of power relations. To be honest, I mean. Sure, IG Metall says the more the better, uh, and employers say nothing. That's the situation we are standing in, and so I'm I'm sorry I can tell you more maybe next year I in in May latest, but we'll see. Sorry. <laughs> okay, then a question: Do you have the profile of those who shifted to the 28 hours option for two years? Yes. And is there a risk of a gender bias? No. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, because, um, yeah, this, this has a lot of dimensions. No, we don't have a real profile. Um, but, um, yeah, my, my impression mm -hmm. is that uh, these are not only women, which is very easy because we are talking about a sector where uh, I think 18% of women are working. So if we make working time policy and if we make uh, policies for more work-life balance, actually we are doing this for men. I mean, it sounds strange, but uh, it's, it's just uh, depending to, to the people working in the sectors. Um, so these are definitely men taking it. But um, you can see that uh, the, the 28 hours are taken a lot by uh, well-qualified people. And also people with uh, better wages, of course, because you don't get wage compensation in this model. So this is what I said before, people have to be able to afford it financially. And this is, of course, so more an option for people who are earning quite well. Yeah, uh, I could complete it a little bit. Um, the uh, very uh, wide chosen option of the eight days instead of the 27.5% uh, wage uh, supplement. Uh, this is uh, really first, it is a special offer because it's two days more worse than uh, the, the wage would be. And um, it is the, uh, only the, the, um, the transformation of a, a supplement wage into free time. So it is uh, uh, no uh, reduction in, um, in the wage. And the other option of 28 hours, uh, it is without wage compensation. And so it is really a problem. And in so far, I think uh, the, the, the question for the further um, bargaining is really how to get a wage compensation, especially also for the uh, 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 people working in the lower and middle ranges of the wage. You know? uh, for the higher, it's not a problem, uh, not such a problem. But uh, for this in the lower wages, it's impossible without compensation. Okay, then um, we have a next question. What are the main political obstacles you are coming up against when it comes to implementation? Political obstacles? I mean, our what's meant by this um maybe the 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 um, political uh, discussion uh, the 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 um, uh, atmosphere in the media no, no. I don't know. actually i don't see so many political obstacles because um the public opinion saw this uh this proposal of IG Metall very positive. Um, it was seen very positive by the lefter parties and of course seen negatively by the uh, 
right-wing uh, parties, I would say, but th this is normal. Um, no, I see the, the real obstacles for implementing something like this uh, are the employers, because we are in a situation now that um, the, the employers uh, are not in peace with the last results of 2018, let's say. Uh, they still see that this uh, was uh, a victory of IG Metall. And so they are very, very much in opposition to everything uh, which is connected with working time reduction and especially with wage compensation. So I think there are two big obstacles. First obstacle is uh, to reach an agreement on that. I mean, we are talking about an idea now. Um, we don't have a result yet. So we will see what kind of result we will get. Um, we don't even have a demand. So um, yeah, and, and the second obstacle is if we have, a, um, if we will have a result, then um, our experience is that we have like a second round in the companies to implement it. Um, we had this with, with the 2018 agreement. And uh, I can imagine that we would have the same struggle in the companies again, uh, maybe if we have such, an, uh, such a result. But on the other hand, let's see. I mean, um, the crisis uh, leads to the fact that, that we have a lot of uh, uh, short working time schemes in Germany at the moment. So companies are practicing this. Uh, they get money from the state, of course, uh, but this, this short uh, working time schemes will end next year. And what then? I mean, maybe the economic uh, crisis uh, will be better then, but we still are in the process of transformation of industry. Um, as I said before, this will uh, also lead to rational, uh, rationalization effects in the companies. So companies will still have problems, but not have the um, short working time schemes to, to deal with it. So they will also need new instruments uh, if they don't want to uh, do mass layoffs. So um, I think in the, in the mid -ter term or long term, it could also be in the interest of, of employers to have instruments of working time reduction uh, to, to hold, hold the things running, let's say. Yes, I think uh, we had, for example, the, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, co-working of the uh, enterprises of the automotive industry continental that uh, uh, proposed already to make this uh, working time reduction but to make the uh, compensation of the wages in the lower ranges um, via the state you know? so that the uh, uh, employers had not to pay this uh, uh, so they have this idea no uh, but okay in fact so, it's a question of distrib of distribution yeah, we are, I mean, um, I think also companies actually have an interest in reducing working time because they see that this is an instrument to keep the qualified people on board in crisis and in the tra transformation, but they don't want to pay for it. They want that society pays for it. And right. this is our job. I think this is our job to say that uh, working time reduction is a question of distribution of wealth and of money in the society. And of course, we go uh, for for uh, yeah, j just distribution, let's say, and it, yeah. it can't be the solution that the state pays the transition of the companies. Yeah. Okay, so then we have a question uh, just connected with this. Um, is there a precedent for saving jobs through working time reduction with IG Metall? And um in the in the past uh, how do you ensure that jobs are saved and how many jobs do you think could be saved <laughs> uh, i think uh, vw it's one of yeah, the yeah. Good yeah we we didn't count for the future how many um jobs could be saved to be honest but um yeah as, as margarita mentioned we have this prominent historical example of the 90s where uh 
Volkswagen did a four, uh, four days working week, uh, 28 hours week, and um, they safeguarded 30,000 jobs in the VW uh, company with this working time reduction, which was uh, a real success, I think. And if you look now, I mean, as I said before, we are uh, currently in, in different negotiations and struggles in companies. Um, and we are, uh, we are already doing uh, collective agreements for companies, so-called future agreements for companies. And if you take, for example, uh, the agreement for Bosch, the agreement for ZF, the agreement for Daimler, they all have working time reduction elements. And for ZF, they counted and they said, um, well, they, they gave the opportunity to reduce working time up to 20%. And this would safeguard in the whole ZF company 10,000 jobs. The problem there is it's without wage compensation. Um, so there is always uh, a thing to improve, I would say. But um, yeah, as I said, there are sufficient examples for, for that it could help. Okay, then um, we come to a very important question. Um, have you thought about joining forces with Fridays for Future yeah, we, we are and already other doing ecological that. movements yeah. to politicize <laughs> the issue of the four-day uh, working week outside the workplace? Yeah, sure. Yes, um, IG Metall is in touch with Fridays for Futures. We already did uh, common actions with Fridays for Futures, especially our youth organization, the IG Metall uh, Youth did uh, common actions with Fridays for Futures. And of course, we don't have uh, always the same opinions in details um, because uh, of course, IG Metall is uh, <laughs> going for the interests of its members. And uh, these are the members in the big car companies and they are not always very happy with the uh, climate goals, for example. Um, so this is a conflict sometimes, yes, but uh, on the other hand, we are uh, y united in the big issues, I think. And this is that uh, we all see the, uh, the necessity that the uh, transition and the transformation has to uh, lead an, an ecological path, let's say. So um, yes, IG Metall is, trying to connect with other organizations in these questions. And yeah, as I said before, I think we have to try to, to fight inclusive uh, struggles and not uh, everybody for him or herself. Okay. So many thanks, Sophie. Uh, so we have to uh, uh, finish uh, uh, this uh, first round of our panel. I can so only uh, answer to one question in the chat. There are also other uh, um, trade unions in Germany who are uh, going on with uh, working time reduction. For example, the trade union of the um, trains uh, or the trade union now in the um, public traffic, they try to begin to uh, go into a first step to working time reduction too, but in a different way, not with this uh, uh, open four days demand. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm really sorry that I have to leave because I, I would love to hear what the others have to say. I, I will be back tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have a good uh, other uh, Thank you very uh, much. conference and up to tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So then we now come uh, to our second uh, good example. This will be uh, presented by Gudmundur Haraldsson. Gudmundur is researcher uh, of the Icelandic uh, um, think tank ALDA. ALDA uh, is a um, um, think tank uh, especially concerned with the issue of local democracy. And in its um, topics, they have also working time reduction as a precondition of political participation. And now I give the word to Gudmundur. 
thank you. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen with you so I can. Oops. Yep. Can you see this? Yes, we can see. And so, um, maybe could you speak a little bit louder? A bit louder, is that yes. better? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, my name is Gudmundur. Uh, I'm a pre representative of ALDA. ALDA is a, a think tank we concentrate on for, uh, democracy, sustainability, and include working hours. Um, working hours is a precondition, of course, as Margaret said, for democracy. I have time for that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to present to you trials of shortening of working hours that was conducted in Iceland for a number of years that has now lead to contracts, basically. Um, so let me begin. So just a little bit about uh, Iceland. Uh, Iceland is a country of 356,000, labor market of 200,000. Relatively small country. <laughs> um, there's high workforce participation, 87%, and 75% working full time. Average working time is 44 hours a week, which is uh, considerably higher than our neighboring countries that we usually compare ourselves to the other Nordics. And working uh, duration of working life is quite long, 47 year, uh, years, which is the longest in Europe. Um, and however, our GDP and uh, living standards are very high and have been for uh, quite a while. Put that way. Um, it is a service and export driven economy with uh, all the characteristics of advanced economies, lots of uh, digital services and so forth. So, in summary, it's an advanced economy. We have high living standards. However, our working time is high, uh, long. And we have uh, households whereby uh, everyone basically might be working full time, but there's still everything to do within the home. Um, so this can lead to uh, imbalance in work-life situation, and uh, that this is actually pronounced. If you look at the authorities such as OECD, you will see that. Um, Iceland is doing poorly in work-life balance, it has been for quite a while. There are older studies that show the same trend. So, um, Alda's, um, Alda's uh, position has been, in essence, that we have all the capabilities to do better here. That we can try to be a little bit more efficient with how we spend our time. and. Uh, and uh, gain a bit of more productivity, but use that to shorten working hours and gain more work-life balance. Um, we view this as a first step in a much longer program, um, which maybe is uh, slightly more complicated to, to explain, but uh, yes. So this is, uh, for us, this is only a first step. So I'm gonna uh, switch to the trials themselves. Um, so for a decade or so, there has been increased public discussion on working hours in Iceland. Um, Alta has participated in this. We hosted a conference last year, for example, beginning of last year. Uh, there have been articles, reports. Alta has published one report. And really um, um, increased awareness of um, that, that uh, you can work less, you can have less stress and burnout as a result, that you can uh, you can still have high living standards even though you work less. There is more public understanding of this and increased in uh, politics as well. Iceland is historically a country of, um, of long working days. This is a, a old trend. So, um, uh, in around 2014, BSRB, which is the Confederation of Public uh, Unions, that's the largest one in the country, proposed a trial with the Reykjavik City Council, Reykjavik is the capital, and the government to trial a shorter working hours. The idea was to study effects on productivity and work-life balance and see if 
study if it was actually possible to reduce hours, but still uh, maintain same services, same output in the workplaces, still do the same things. Um, yes, and this was actually agreed to by uh, the regular city council and the finance minister. So um, this is a rough timeline of the trials. Uh, and you can see, you know, 2010, then 2020 it leads to new contracts. It's a long time. <laughs> 2015, the tr regular trial actually starts with 66 participants. It included the service center, uh, child protection service, um, and uh, the next year the first results are in and they are positive, so more workplaces join. At that point, about 280 participate. The year after that, the government trial starts with 800 participants, included the tax office, police station, uh, our registers, and uh, so forth. Um, the trial in Reykjavik was extended the next year, so 2,500 people were participating in 100 workplaces. 2,500 is more than 1% of our workforce. So on the scale of Iceland, it's a big trial. Uh, the same year the government trial was extended and a hospital department joined. The, the point of having a hospital department was to study the uh, possibility of shift our workers joining such a trial and how to uh, make that function. Uh, it did. And so in 2018-19 there was uh, a number of studies, final results and uh, a conclusion of the trial basically. 2019 and 2020 new contracts nationwide were signed and they included shorter working hours um, for thousands of uh, workers in uh, many um, different sectors, public, private, service, production, etc. Also healthcare. Um, so the shorter working hours in practice, they were uh, guided by committees. These were large trials and they were, uh, they were they're trying to find a way to um, do this. This was a bit new to people in a way. Um, there was no reduction in pay. Uh, all workplaces had to apply except for the first two workplaces which were handpicked. Those workplaces that applied they had to demonstrate ability to maintain services. There was criteria for eligibility um, in the government uh, trial. So these were two different trials, one at the Reykjavik city level and one at the government level. They were slightly different, but mostly the same. Um, and the strategies for shortening of hours varied. In some workplaces, offices, this included shortening meetings, um, simplifying processes, rethinking how things are done, etc. In uh, workplaces where there were shifts, the shifts were changed. Um, if there was an opportunity for having maybe less staff at a certain time, the this was done so that people's shifts would end sooner or 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 begin later, and thus you can shorten their the shifts reduce the working hours, but still maintain same service. Just choose basically to uh, change the shifts depending on circumstances. So there was no single template really. There was uh, it's different between all uh, between workplaces, and um, these workplaces were so different by by nature that this really was necessary. Also. The number of hours shortened varied, so they could be one, two, three, four, or five hours a week, depended on workplace. Um, there were a number of studies, qualitative, quantitative, both focusing on workers and managers. 
these were group interviews, questionnaires, individual interviews, and they focused on work-life balance, stress levels, home life, communications, side effects of the trials, etc. Um, the the um, the point was to gain understanding of the import, uh, impact of these trials and possible side effects as well. Um, so there was actually a whole stack of reports on this. There's, uh, there's uh, hundreds of pages of material. So um, the results were, um, well, let's begin with a myth. There is no shortening of hours, only lengthening, lengthening of overwork. This was propagated in Iceland here by the employer associations before and during the trials. But this did not materialize. People actually worked less. The numbers, uh, because they kept track of uh, uh, how much people were working, the numbers show this. This was confirmed in interviews. And I should note that in these interviews, managers were not present unless they were contacting interviews with managers. So the people had to try to make sure that people could speak freely. The researchers were independent academics. Um, the workplaces were able to provide same services and maintain um, similar uh, same service as before. The idea was not to reduce service. There are some exceptions to this. For example, in one place they Changed the opening hours, and probably, and they actually reduced the hours of opening uh, at the time when it was least used. This did not have uh, effect on uh, how well the service or how well the service was um, uh, thought of by the users. They that was okay. So there was positive effects on the work-life balance. People people actually felt that they could. Um, um, it was easier to go through their daily lives, to do, uh, do their work and actually do their, uh, maintain their homes and, and uh, do everything you need to do in the regular home life. There was uh, men participated more in home duties. This was noted by uh, pretty much everyone. There was positive impact on other family members, less stress, in interestingly, and positive impact on burnout symptoms. People actually said repeatedly, we just have more time. And they, um, so generally the effects were positive. If they were not positive, they were mostly neutral. And in some cases they were negative. Uh, these this was moan mostly that some people felt there was a bit more speed. Everything happened faster. There's just shorter time to do everything at work. Um, this was not, um, big factor it was was noted um, most people were happy and wanted to maintain and continue this the general uh, atmosphere was well if they're going to stop this trial we will we will protest <laughs> so yes people really wanted to continue this they felt this is a significant change for their lives impacted their lives and so um, in 2019 and 2020, after long negotiations, particularly for BSRB, it took a whole year to negotiate. They signed contracts. The trials did help the unions to negotiate and uh, as they could uh, give um, uh, good reasons for why they should implement shorting working hours. They had concrete examples of how to implement it. Um, however, the number of hours shortened were variable. They were not always the same. Uh, and there were two forms of shortening that are common. So there's a flat reduction that everyone gets. For example, nine minutes a day, 45 minutes a week, flexible. And then additional shortening by two hours a week or, or, a few, or some minutes a day. Flexible again, implementation. And the workers propose a strategy to implement this. Uh, they might have to give up, uh, for example, their coffee breaks, so that they actually do get coffee breaks, but these might be at 
uh, irregular times. People have commented on this and actually say in practice it may not be such a uh, uh, big factor. It's, it's uh, because you get to leave earlier anyway. Um, so, but the numbers vary, and the above is an example. There were dozens, tens of contracts. They all differ. Um, so there is no single model for implementing shorter hours. This is flexible for each workplace. Uh, BSRB is probably the largest uh, winner in this round of negotiations. And for regular daytime workers, their hours went from 40 to 36 per week, which is a significant change. Shift workers from 40 to 36, and even if possible to, to 32 hours. Also for shift workers, their uh, work, uh, work outside of the daytime is amounts to more. So 80% work in the, in the night leads to 100% pay. So, um, so uh, all, all hours outside of the daytime are count to more. Uh, importantly, pay was not reduced as a, as a, uh, because of these contracts. So uh, yeah, we have a bit more information on our website on these contracts and how they're implemented. There's also uh, information about uh, a conference we had last year. Um, yeah, so basically this is... Uh, okay, I so I, I thank you very much, Gudmundur for this uh, uh, great uh, uh, experimentation. And um, I think there will be a lot of questions. Um, let me see. Um, I just can't see uh, no question, but maybe then I can put one question myself. Yep. Um, it's interesting, it's amazing that they uh, got this uh, working time reduction without any uh, pay loss. Mm -hmm. But uh, what with the uh, uh, loss of staff? Uh, or no, uh, there, there is a full uh, compensation of the wages, but yep. no compensation of the staff. And, no, uh, no, there was no reduction in staff, no. Uh, no, 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 not reduction of stuff, but okay. uh, the, the reduction of the working hours yes. needed uh, um, compensation in uh, more stuff when you don't want to have um, uh, more stress. Ah, yes, in some workplaces, um, I think, for example, in the hospital department, they increased stuff before starting the trial. Mm -hmm. They did this also in the regular city trial. Uh, some places they uh, increased stuff before starting the trial. Mm -hmm. um, this was needed anyway to maintain services and uh, provide reasonable working conditions for people. So it was needed anyway, but they then they commenced the trial. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, workplaces that did not have uh, sufficient a uh, number of workers to maintain service after the trial, they did not, they were not allowed to join. So you, they had to demonstrate that the no, current number of employees were, were on shorter hours could actually maintain the same service. Mm. If they could not, they were not allowed to join. But yes, in some some places, some cases, they, they no, uh, there was increased stuff, not always. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as you maybe know, this was the crucial point in this famous example in Göteborg, in Sweden. Mm. They were the first where a municipality uh, made this uh, working time reduction from eight hours to six hours with yeah. full uh, compensation of wages and also with compensation of staff. Yes. And because this uh, is not, uh, it uh, costs a lot. And this was the reason why uh, the next uh, uh, government of uh, Göteborg, who was a conser conservative government, deleted this wonderful uh, experiment. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, 
So the trial in uh, I, these trials in Iceland that did not lead to a direct increased cost. Um, they would have needed to add more stuff anyway. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a this is a real headache. This is correct. And uh, in the new contracts, the new contracts will lead to increased costs. They will need to add uh, stuff so they can uh, shorten people's shifts in the night, for example. But this is, um, you can, on the other hand, argue that, you know, this, this was needed anyway, because people uh, working night shifts, they have, well, more sickness and uh, they live, live shorter lives. You have to compensate people that do night shifts. It's a very difficult uh, thing for, the, for people to work that kind of life, both socially and physically. Um, you can you can argue that increased costs there is actually leading to better people's lives in a way okay then i have now the question to you uh, what do you see for the future of working time reduction in iceland do you see <laughs> more campaigning for further reductions and do you see also other maybe uh, not only in this uh, public service of Reykjavik? So what I, I um, depends on scales. <laughs> I see, I can see that we actually uh, choose to, well, I, I can see private companies uh, introducing voluntarily shorter hours. But there have been a few companies doing this with success. The one company went to 32 hours a week without any reduction in pay. Uh, with, and it was a great success, less sickness and uh, increased performance in the company, maintaining uh, income as usual. Um, I can see more private companies doing this voluntarily. I should note that these contracts actually bind a lot of private com companies to shorten hours. So uh, they are not ex excluded from this. Um, but I can see more private companies going this route just simply to provide better work-life balance and making their uh, workplace a, a more attractive uh, place to work. Um, on a more macro scale, I, 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 what I vision is uh, and we vision is basically working less and consuming less so that we use uh, the methods we have, uh, the technology we have to reduce working hours and, um, and use the high productivity to uh, live, um, to work less, but consuming less in time. Mm -hmm. Or over consumption is a, is a problem really. Um, but this requires, as has been mentioned here, redistribution. So, mm -hmm. N not and, something very easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there is uh, uh, the next question concerned uh, in some sense to that. Is there um, also beginning a more general movement, maybe led by a law or a political party? Mm -hmm. And is there any, any plan to organize this more radically, maybe in the direction of a four day working week? Um. So politically, there uh, politically this started even before uh, before the trials in 2000, uh, I believe 2011, 12. Uh, a bill was uh, proposed in Parliament on the shortening of the working week to, I believe, 36 hours from 40. So the legal working week here is 40. This bill uh, re would reduce it to, I believe, 35 or 36. Uh, it was never uh, put into law, but it has been proposed a few times by the Icelandic Pirate Party. Um, so th yes, there is some interest in politics. However, most politicians, they distance themselves from this. They, um, this may seem, uh, Yes, uh, it's strange, but here politicians often have the line, 
uh, uh, working hours and working conditions is not a matter for politics. It's for unions and employers to decide. Um, it is uh, very interesting if you look at, for example, laws on working conditions. So, yeah, uh, it, um, this may be changing and this requires changing. Um, in terms of uh, building a movement, for example, for four day week, I've thought about that. Um, there's no movement currently, but there is widespread consensus that we need shorter working week. Uh, but yes, I've been, I've been wondering about starting some kind of campaign for a four day week. I just don't know how to, how it, it should look like. So, um, uh, there was not uh, a huge outside uh, of the working place mobilization for this working time reduction uh, amongst students or political parties or artists or women. Uh, was, so I would say this was uh, um, maybe not huge, no, but uh, the unions talk, took this on. Um, they, you know, uh, got it to a conclusion. What helped, uh, what really helped this was that uh, the time, anyway, the economy was uh, booming and things were going well, private debt was going down, and uh, there was more profits for companies, etc. So that, you know, the economic, there was no crisis in the economy. So it was easier to discuss these things and get a movement. Uh, get things moving. Um, there has been some interest then, uh, from politicians, not a lot. Maybe I'd say it is the pirates that have been uh, least afraid of talking about it and doing something about it, <laughs> uh, while the other ones tend to distance themselves a bit. Um, um, the associations and, and so lobby groups have commented on the bill, they have tried to raise awareness, uh, but I think the unions had the largest share and really got this moving. Um, okay, uh, because uh, you know uh, there are some uh, social democratic uh, prime ministers like uh, in Finland or in New Zealand, who are really openly uh, uh, speaking for the uh, four days a week. No? Okay, but uh, there is the offer of the um, people we have in our membership here in the network uh, of the four day uh, working week campaign in UK to um, uh, help you, to support you in, in these questions maybe. That would be cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, then a uh, question, uh, did uh, the, um, uh, uh, the duties of women in the home uh, really reduce in this experiences? Um, the response to this was a bit mixed. Uh, <laughs> in some cases, people said yes, it was reduced. Sometimes it said no. So it was a bit, a bit mixed. Um, but yes, a, a, lot, a lot of respondents did say yes to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. In some cases they said, no, you know, my husband is just acting the same as before. <laughs> he didn't change. In some cases they said, yeah, he's, you know, he, he, he's now, when I come home, he's all, all of a sudden, you know, been doing stuff. Right? Amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Um... Did also private sector companies introduce uh, uh, reduced hours? Private sector companies, uh, um, yes. In this con, so the, the contracts uh, the unions here make are cross-sectional. They are legally binding for private and public. The same contract can uh, can stretch to both both public and private. Comp uh, public institutions and private companies. Um, so yes, they, they do encompass private companies as well. Um, one uh, large union of uh, office workers and um, um, 
shop workers, for instance, they 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 got a very good contract that that does uh, legally bind company, private companies to short run hours. Okay. Okay. Then the last question: Are the reports on the results of your researches available in English? <laughs> yes. So most of the uh, I think all of the studies published on the trials themselves are in Icelandic. Um, however, uh, we and Alta uh, have been working with Autonomy along with BSRB to produce a report in English on these trials. And we want to get that out hopefully soon. Um, this would be a summary of the trials, summary of the results, methods used to shorten hours, uh, quotes from participants, details of which workplaces um, participated, timeline, more much more detailed timeline than I was <laughs> I put forward there. So the something is coming. Okay, that's wonderful. So I thank you very much, good Mundur, uh, for this uh, report, and uh, we are glad to see that Iceland is beginning to move so fast okay. <laughs> thank you and thank then you. i give the word to maxim nis maxim is uh, working in the trade union for the public uh, services cgsp and uh, uh, this uh, trade union is part of the socialist uh, um, trade unions confederation in belgium and I suppose uh, Maxim can explain us this much better than I can do. And so you have the word. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, giving me the, the opportunity to um, to explain you a bit um, how we in Brussels have um, one or even two projects um, running for a, um, a working time reduction. So I hope I'll be able to inform you a bit more about this. Now, first of all, I will just have to share my screen to see how this works. Yes, it works. Perfect. So um, I think you all know, even from hearing that the, 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 the Belgian political system and even the trade union system is a bit complicated. So I thought I'd just um, explain you a bit, uh, just uh, that I just inform you a bit of how our um, trade union system works so that, so, so that you will be more able to, um, to visualize and imagine how, um, how we work here. So the Oops, next slide. Yes. So the there are three major trade unions in Belgium, which uh, are historically corrected with the political philosophy, of course. So there is initially the, the Christian trade union, there is the socialist trade union, and the liberal trade union. These are the three basic and biggest trade unions. Now, depending on the profession, there are also other trade unions but specifically connected with the with the, the the profession of people there are specific specific trade unions in the military in the in the railway in the in the police force for instance but i myself am a member of the historically socialist um, trade union, the General Work Federation of Belgium. We use a lot of um, a lot of, um, of, of words and symbols here, but that's because we are officially a, a trilingual country, Dutch, French and uh, German. And well, these are the, the names and the symbols of uh, the, our trade union in French and in uh, Dutch. So our socialist trade union on a national level is the FGTB ABVV in French and in Dutch, the General Work Federation of Belgium. And I myself am secretary of the CGSP ACOD, which is the General Central of Public Services. Um, I am a secretary inside this uh, CGSP ACOD, the General Central of Public Services, of the sector of the local and regional um, entities, which um, consists of 
which is res responsible for 19 municipalities and social welfare centers, public hospitals, intermunicipal structure, pol police departments, different regional agencies, uh, amongst them uh, Net Brussel, which is res responsible for the cleaning the streets, for instance. We are the biggest sector inside the ACOD CGSP of Brussels. Now, about the region of Brussels, um, it's a small region. There are three different regions in Belgium, the Dutch speaking, the French speaking, and Brussels is a bilingual region, Dutch and French. So on a Belgian level, there are more or less a bit more than 11 million Belgians. And in Brussels, we are a bit more than 1.2 million citizens. One of the major, um, the major, um, problems in Brussels is that there is an enormous youth unemployment. So by youth, I, we mean people, um, youngsters who are younger than 25 years old. The youth unemployment is just below 20%. I mean, that's, uh, that's one in five. That means uh, just a bit less under 240,000 youngsters, people younger than 25 years, on a scale of 1.2 million citizens. That's quite an enormous um, rate. Here you can see a map of Belgium. On your left side, we can see the three. You can see the three different region: Flanders, which is Dutch speaking; Wallonia, French speaking. So I'm a member of the Brussels region, just the little dot in the middle, uh, which is bilingual. And uh, on the right screen, you can see a small uh, image of the the 19 different um, towns. And there are two towns in Brussels uh, which have implemented some degree of a working time reduction. And the first town I'd like to talk to you about is the municipality of saint Jostenode, saint Jostenode. And uh, you can see the little black dot there on the, the right in the middle of your screen, which is also the smallest uh, municipality of the, the region of Brussels. So saint Jostenode, it's, an, it's, a very, it's a small area, so it's the smallest town of the 19 uh, municipalities of uh, Brussels, but it's an extremely densely densely populated area. There are on a scale of 1.14 square kilometers, almost 27,000 uh, inhabitants. And um, different studies have shown that we have the same population density as for instance, the Indian city of Calcutta. So this is an enormous, it's quite a small town, but with an, with an extremely populated, um, yeah, and it, which is extremely densely populated. The population is also very young. 20% of these 27,000 inhabitants have less than, are less than 80 years, 18 years old, but it's also the poorest population of, uh, of Belgium, of the entire Belgian state. The town itself isn't really poor, but the population is very poor. And so there is a lot of unemployment there. On a national level, our trade union has always since uh, 30 or 40 years um, demanded the, the four day work week for all workers. So it's very important. We always spe speak about working time reduction, but we like to speak about a collective working time reduction. Why collective? Because for us, it has to concern, to concern all work, all possible workers um, in in every possible uh, profession. So we always uh, defended the four day work week uh, on a 32 hour level per week, 32, 32 uh, working hours per week with the maintainment of course of a full pay of a full wage and with additional uh, recruitment of uh, new people, new staff, um, just to compensate the extra work. Why? Because just we, well, there is of course, um, it's no use to uh, work less if you get paid less, or even if you maintain, if you get the same, uh, the same wage, but if you have to do the, the five days work in four day, days, so people will, if you do this um, somehow in the long run or even in the medium run, you will get sick and you will fall in burnout. So we maintain the, we, we really want a collective working time reduction, but by maintaining, of course, the full wage and 
by uh, with the recruitment of new staff, new people, just to compensate the extra work. And just to compare these uh, two, these two, 32 hours per week, which we ask in Belgium, the general work week on an annual level um, is 38 hours, but there is legally a possibility to, to work up to 50 hours a week. But officially and in general, we speak about 30, 38 hours a week. So we've been asking for years to implement the collective working time um, reduction, of course, by maintaining the conditions that we, we maintain for a full wage and that there are compensating recruitments on the, on the, uh, in the workforce. And uh, in 2017, the, the mayor of the, the small village of Sint Joostenode um, invited us, invited uh, the, the three trade unions for a presentation because he wanted to, um, to present uh, his idea to, uh, to implement uh, the, the working time re reduction. And uh, well, we, we received a nice presentation, which was called the beginning of a new utopia in Sint Joost. I like the name. So the, he wanted to, uh, to implement the working time reduction in 2018, but it took a bit more time. So we were negotiating for about two years, but not on a weekly basis. Um, so there are different working groups from 2017 till 2019 between the administration, the political side and the, the three trade unions. And since the, be the beginning of this year, on the 1st of January, the collective working time reduction was officially implemented. So it's still quite new, new and unfortunately, we all know that the Corona crisis um, came along and we don't have yet any statistics of, well, we know how people feel, people are, are very happy, but we, did, we don't yet have any official statistics showing that people are officially less sick, for instance, we hope to get some next year. So about implementation since the, the 1st of January of this year, it's, it is a collective working time reduction because it, is, because it concerns all workers uh, with, from all different uh, jobs and professions available in the, in the administration without distinction, but from 55 years. So people who are less than 55 years, unfortunately, don't yet don't uh, have a right to um, of, a, of a working time reduction. But of course, we are working on it, and each year we are uh, we will bring the subject up. And uh, well, of course, our our meaning is to uh, to lower the years um, if possible. So it is in a certain way, a collective working time reduction because it concerns all people of the administration, all different professions and jobs, but unfortunately yet from the year of 55. Um, there was a compensation, so uh, of a new, so new staff was recruited. Twenty percent new staff was rec uh, recruited. Uh, on the political level, uh, it was asked that whatever the cost was, uh, the service to the public, of course, had to be maintained, and it's normal because we are, uh, we defend the public service, uh, so it's quite normal that the service to the citizens had to be maintained. And uh, the political on political level, they uh, they also uh, wanted in exchange that we will we would be working on um, on on, reg on on intern um, papers to uh, to be to be able to uh, work from home, for instance, to install teleworking. The basic idea, and it's the same. Uh, there are bad, uh, well, the same arguments that we already heard before. The municipality the municipality wanted to offer a better balance between work and family for all workers from 55 years onwards, of course. The workers, well, it wanted the workers to be happier. Of course, there's a political reason behind it because happier workers are normally spoken less sick or, uh, or less in burnout because they are mo more, mo more motivated, their product productivity would increase. And of course, by an increasing productivity, the citizen would also find out that uh, people are happier and that the service to the citizen would increase too. 
and of course on a global level by recruiting new staff it would also diminish uh, the, the the unemployment rate in brussels at a municipal level because um, we are always organized in at a municipal level and social welfare centers social welfare welfare centers are smaller than the town halls but they work together they basically the same institution but two different uh, employers at a municipal level more or less um, six well there are more or less 600 workers and uh, so more than one on five workers were concerned um, 121 workers were concerned at the time and um, they recruited between 22 and 24 additional people especially youngsters just to be able to compensate the extra amount of work since 121 people would work less work four days instead of five it would cost a bit, uh, it, it would cost about uh, 37,000 euros per job, per new job um, recruited. And at an annual cost, it would cost 900,000 euros. But of course, the basic idea is that it would be an advantage for the, for the municipality because people would be happier, less sick. And in the long run, it wouldn't cost that many. So right now, unfortunately, we do not have any new figures, especially due to uh, to the COVID crisis. We don't really have actual figures to evaluate the collective uh, working time reduction. But we just know uh, when we speak to the to our um, our members and uh, and the people that they are extremely happy and uh, well, they feel much better than than before. So in, on the Belgium level, I already told you that the general work week. Um, was uh, well counts 38 working hours a week. Historically, the town of Sint Joost already had a small working time reduction because people there worked 36 hours a week instead of 38. And so right now, with this working time reduction, um, the people are workers are at 28 hours and a quarter working time a week. So I know the program only speaks of the, the municipality of Sint Joostenode, but I, well, I I cheat a bit and talk you about the other uh, working time reduction, which is not a collective working time reduction, but another working time reduction um, on the level of Brussels, which is in a, a second town of Brussels. It's the little red dot you can see on the left of your screen. It's a, quite a large town, the town of Anderlecht. And um, so in St. Joostenode, the small town, uh, it was implemented on the, in January 2020, but in the town of Anderlecht, it was implemented in August 2018. But it was just implemented on the level of the municipality, not on the level of the smaller social welf welfare centers. We're, we're still discussing uh, with the political authorities on that. Uh, instead of St. Joost, St. Joost in the first new municipality people work less from the, year, the years of uh, 55 years. In Anderlecht, it, uh, it's beginning from 50 years. So each, well, mo most workers who are 50 years or elder, not 55, um, have the right to, uh, to reduce their uh, working time. But unfortunately, not unlike in the, the smaller town, it's not for all workers. So it's just basically for the toughest jobs, the physically speaking, the hardest jobs, manual workers, uh, people who clean the streets, who uh, collect the garbage, the refuse in the streets. So it doesn't concern all jobs from 50 years onwards. It only cons uh, consists of the physically speaking, the toughest jobs. Um, in total, it concerns 250 workers on a total of 1,500. And the system is a bit different because, um, so in the smallest town, St. Joost, people just um, work one day less. But in Anderlecht, the political authorities just give 53 days, uh, well, they give 53 more days off a year to the people who have, uh, to the workers who have the most tough job. 
So it's a bit a different way of viewing. They don't necessarily officially work less, but they get 53 days off a year, 53 days off more than, than someone else a year, which is basically a one day a week. There were also 45 young people recruited just to compensate this extra work. People, of course, maintained their, uh, their regular wage as if they worked for, for five days. And um, the, the authorities promised us that each year it would be possible to negotiate again uh, to, in order to increase the beneficiaries. Of course, in 2020, due to COVID, once again, uh, they didn't have financial means to increase the beneficiaries. But well, we hope that we that well, that more people will be able to work less in 2021. And so, right now, also, we don't have any figures, um, unfortunately, in order to um, to 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 evaluate uh, the the impact on the uh, well on the well-being of the workers. So that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be uh, very happy to answer them. I hope it was a bit clear that uh, it wasn't too difficult or technical. Yes. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Maxim. I think uh, even if it's a complex uh, uh, construction, everybody could understand it well. And um, uh, so I now uh, will go to the question. Um, here is the question, do you know what they choose to prioritize working time reduction for older people? And how is the question? I'm sorry, I didn't. Yes, I have I'm some sorry. difficulties to understand this question too. Uh, ah, why? Why in this experimentation they choose only elder people? Ah, of course, yeah, of course. Well, because it well, they say of course that is it costs money, and um, uh, a decision had to be made, or it was so they told us, or it would not be possible, or we will start with a, a certain category of people and then of course um, as a trade union uh, because right now we have to work in Belgium until up to 67 years old we also had to um, to, to ask the workers how they felt about it and um, the mandate which was given us was to uh, to ask to implement it from a certain age onwards because of course well people who are uh, who have been working since 20, 25, 30 years, especially in hard physical jobs. Uh, well, it's more difficult for them, of course, to, to keep on working 38 hours a week. So it was basically, um, yeah, we had to make, make a decision somehow. And uh, our, princip our principle was that it would be important to accept the, the principle of the working time reduction or the collective working time reduction. And then, uh, of course, each year we would negotiate again with the political authorities um, to hope to, uh, to be able to increase the amount of beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, there is connected the next question. Are um, these collective working time reductions in Brussels uh, for these uh, group only perceived as a model uh, for Belgium? And uh, also uh, to going would be my question, also as a first step on the further uh, um, collective uh, working time reduction for everybody. Yeah. Well, right now people speak about it and um, it has been in the in the media, in the mainstream media, though, so uh, most people know that it exists. But right now, honestly, people don't speak about, or on a political level, people don't really speak about it much. I, do think that indeed the moment was a bit lost with um, Corona, but of course in the second town in Anderlecht it already 
SEMI exists since 2018 and people don't really talk much of it. So I, we are all a bit waiting on, on to get official figures, I think, um, so that we can officially prove and officially statistics, st statistics so we can officially prove that um, it's um, the working time reduction has a positive uh, effect on on um, on the welfare of, of people and um, yeah well we we'll, we hope to get them soon but we don't have the have them at the moment but right now honestly people don't on a political level people people don't talk a lot, lot about it. I do believe that also the political members of conservative parties just don't want to talk about them because um, the, the two municipalities where it is implemented um, are of a socialist signature. There are members of the socialist political party um, who are in the majority there. Mm -hmm. So I do believe there is a political reason not to mention it further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and of course and, I. Oh yeah. And then the question is, how yeah. did the higher up authorities react on this experiment? Yeah. Was the town of Saint Jos able to pay for the nine hundred thousand uh, euro additional cost yeah. by itself? Well, it and it was. Just, yeah. Just didn't need to the support of the general administration of Brussels or. Yeah. No. Well, initially it was presented that uh, the the mayor. Uh, wanted to ask more additional means of the higher Brussels political level. But we didn't, did not receive any additional information that he basically got the, the money, because if the higher political level gave him money, he, well, they would have they would have to give money to, to the other municipal lead, other municipalities too. Um, so they didn't, according to my knowledge, get the necessary means from uh, the higher political level. But the town itself isn't a really poor town. People in the town are poor, the poorest of all Belgium. But the town itself, uh, there are a lot of uh, hotels or uh, enterprises uh, around the, the trading station, for instance. And uh, they pay a lot of taxes. So the town itself isn't really an extremely they're not extremely rich, but it isn't an extremely poor town. So say, there, there was really a political decision to invest 900,000 euros in the working time reduction. Okay. Okay. Then the next question is, uh, do you have re reactions of the younger workers? <laughs> well, like always, Everyone is all right. Everyone uh, is entitled to to uh, to also ask uh, to work one day less. But uh, of course, uh, our answer is that if we didn't accept it, well, we would just lose the principle. So it was in, it was important to accept the principle and then just uh, in order to open the possibilities um, to negotiate that younger people would be able to uh, to. To, um, to make use of a four-day work week. But indeed, a lot of young people, uh, and even young, yes, um, even people from who are 35, 40, 45 years old are often also working since 15 or 20 years. They also have a personal family. They also, they also have uh, young children. So of course, they also want to, um, to be able to work less. So unfortunately, it was difficult to... Um, to obtain something for everyone we're working on on it but yeah we didn't obtain that unfortunately mm. and um, uh, have you also reactions of the younger workers who were um, employed for this uh, working time reduction not really but we know that well there is a lot really a lot of unemployment in brussels and um our municipalities offer a uh, correct wage. Uh, people of the municipalities don't in Brussels, they don't earn as much and as in uh, enterprises, for instance. But there is a security. I mean, you get less chance of being um, laid off, for instance, in a municipality. There is also the principle of working for the citizen and not working for actionaries or uh, to make money. So um, a lot of people like to work in our municipalities, especially youngsters, because they know if they work there, that they will probably keep on working there 
for the next decades or perhaps even until their, their pension. So it's a positive thing. They, they really recruit, recruited extra people and it diminished just a bit the, the, unemployment, the, the unemployment rate. Yeah. And uh, uh, can you say how many women and how many men could participate in Anderlecht? Yeah, well, I don't have any statistics on that. Now, in our public services, generally, there are a lot of women who work in our public services. I would say it's about, perhaps about 50-50, 45, mm -hmm. 55, something like that. Um, it's about even, mm -hmm. to my knowledge. Okay. Um, okay, then there's a question. Considering that the salaries of the participants were preserved and some previously unemployed young people were newly employed, do you think this reduction scheme is negative for the climate, at least in the short run? I honestly have no idea. Um, I like to say that a lot of people in Brussels is a small area and um, since there was a lot of unemployment in Brussels, a lot of people who live in Brussels tried to get a job um, in the in Flanders, the Dutch speaking part of Belgium, or in Wallonia, uh, the French speaking part of Belgium. And a lot of Belgians, unfortunately, they liked uh, to use their cars. So a lot of people tried to just to get a job elsewhere in another region because they, they need a job. And uh, by creating more jobs in Brussels, I hope that, statistically speaking, that it reduces the, the impact on the climate because people can just get a job more or less next door. And uh, more, Brussels is more and more difficult to... Uh, it's more and more difficult to use a car in Brussels because Brussels is basically um, saturated and uh, very small area especially with the european institu institutions for instance and a lot of people just use the public transport so i hope that by creating jobs next door inside the region of brussels that it will reduce the the impact on the climate mm -hmm. um then maybe uh, uh from my side the question um, more generally, um, uh, does the FGTB um, uh, has, have a, a general um, reflection on this um, connection of working time reduction and climate protection? Well, uh, they, there is a, a, a part of the FGTB, RBVV, has, um, is very active in, a, in an organization, a French-speaking organization called the CEPAC, uh, which is basically also a, a think tank, and uh, it has uh, launched some, uh, some very interesting studies about the, the working time reduction. So since a few years, I like to think that perhaps what we succeeded to, to obtain here has perhaps launched a bit the, the interest again inside of our inside our national trade union. But since a few years, um, there is again a, a larger reflection going on inside our uh, well, trade union on a national level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it isn't really the well, it's 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 basically formed in a in in a think tank, a French speaking think tank, but it exists. It could yet be be more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So then I thank you very much, uh, Maxime. Thank and uh, now we come uh, to the last round of our discussion and. I think we now should uh, um, uh, reflect on the common uh, issues and common problems uh, of all the three um, examples and also of our uh, common fight in uh, all the countries um, to bring further, to bring ahead uh, uh, working time reduction. And so, um, yeah, I don't know if there is no direct question to this. Um, maybe. Um, okay. 
um, maybe I put a question um, to all the um, now uh, Sophie is not present. It's it's um, it's uh, sorry, but uh, okay. But um, I think in general we have at the moment um, maybe uh, because of Corona a very um, uh, uh, tense uh, uh, um, situation because everybody is uh, uh, afraid to lose his job in some sense. Yeah? And in so far, um, I'm not sure if we maybe could have a situation um, where the idea of working time reduction uh, to preserve jobs ha could have a better um, reputation in the uh, whole population. Huh? Because I think um, the, the fight for working time reduction will not be won when only the trade unions alone will do it. Yeah? And so uh, um, my question is, um, how do you think about the, the possibilities in your countries to connect the fight of the uh, trade union for this concrete working time reduction with the, the general mood and the general trends in the population for shorter working time. And are there any any trials, any uh, uh, little uh, cooperations or like that? Um, should I begin? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, for Iceland uh, using um, uh, short and working hours as a kind of way to say distribute wealth and distribute uh, work. Uh, I think it could be a difficult struggle. Uh, people here are used to thinking that uh, we should, we just need new jobs. That's the kind of default in politics. Uh, I think it would be quite hard it be a, a very much new way of thinking for most people here. Um, people here are used to a turbulent economy, uh, but uh, the kind of usual solution, if you like, is always to create new jobs and not to share what we currently have. So um, I think it would be quite difficult. Not impossible, but it would take uh, a while. Mm -hmm. okay. And how do you think, Maxima? Well, we as a trade union, we are very active in the, the civil society and uh, we are active in a lot of um, social movements. A lot of social movements also come get in touch with us to, to ask uh, if we can support, uh, support them in manifestos or uh, in activities outside. Um, I like to think that Brussels is a bit like a, an experimentation lab of, of the entire Bel of, of Belgium in its entirety. And uh, I think there is a lot of possibilities. I think we're just waiting that perhaps someone takes the initiative to, uh, <laughs> to get some to bring some people around uh, the same table. Um, because it, it remains quite theoretical. There are think tanks which are well, publishing books uh, about uh, the subject, uh, manifestos, but right now people, I, a lot of people just, the sh there is a social price and just people want, to, a lot of people just want a job because uh, there are a lot of problems and um, I think we're just um, basically waiting perhaps uh, for a few people or organizations to, to take the initiative to, um, to, yeah, I mean, to to get around the table with different organizations, and of course, we would be happy to uh, to to, partic to participate in that. And perhaps that we can use the our proper our own experiences on a Brussels level with collective time reduction in order to uh, to 
well, we could use them as a lab for, to see how it would be possible to, imp to implement it in, in the whole of Belgium, for instance, or even in Europe, why not? I think basically we're just waiting on some people. We, we're uh, well, we're all active in a lot of uh, movements and uh, actions. And well, if some people would just get take the initiative, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, so it seems to be also a, a question of uh, publicity of how you make public all your um, trials in this sense for a broader uh, public. No? Yeah. Also, uh, uh, maybe I say something for Germany. Uh, in Germany, we have the interesting case that uh, the trade unions, uh, especially the IG Metall, is going ahead with working time reduction. But since, uh, let's say, a year, we also have in the political field uh, uh, not a uh, few um, uh, voices um, who are really arguing for a reduced full-time work. For example, the, the, the um, chief, uh, both chiefs of our left party are really um, uh, openly uh, fighting for a reduced uh, full-time around the 30 hours per week. And uh, relatively new also the uh, uh, presidium of the uh, Social Democrats is uh, going in this direction. And also of the Green Party, uh, some uh, uh, speaking like that. And especially now in the Corona crisis, because we have this uh, huge experimentation with the so-called Kurzarbeit. Uh, the short time work. What is uh, working time reduction to save jobs with the compensation of wages by the state. Um, but this is a real uh, um, working uh, experimentation with working time reduction. And so I think um, there are a lot of more uh, or better preconditions at the moment than before. Okay, um, now we have uh, some questions. Um, have either of you had interest from other countries trying to do similar things? Hmm. Um, I'm not sure who is now the, the address of this question. We, um, both, we both are, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said everything. Maybe uh, the, the question is uh, if there are other uh, from other countries in our public who maybe have uh, um, similar uh, experiences or trials. Uh, would be fine to, to, to go on. I personally know that, for example, in uh, the Netherlands, they have uh, uh, big experiences with this uh, elder to younger uh, uh, um, exchange of working time. No? That elder go uh, earlier out or reduce uh, some and younger are um, employed for that. No? Um, Can I comment? Yeah, okay. Um, I just want to say that, uh, yes, uh, we have had interest from other countries, uh, particularly the UK. So um, had some uh, inquiries and cooperation. Uh, I mentioned the report we, we're working with autonomy. So we have, yes, we, we've seen if she's in interest, definitely. Um, but I think this trial in Iceland is not very well known uh, in generally outside of Iceland. Mm -hmm. And Maxim? Well, we didn't well get it. Well, to my knowledge, no other country or city got in touch with us about it. I don't think really uh, it's really known that our two uh, municipalities uh, um, have been taking on the project. But I don't know if um, I think what's I think it would be interesting that um, if, if there would be a sort of um, 
um, organization perhaps on a European level or on a, a worldwide level, which would just um, be, be able to um, to put different uh, the different examples that we have together, just so we can really have an exchange together about the, the matter and we can learn from each other. Because now we, we've all heard of, uh, in Belgium, of the experience in Göteborg, for instance, or on, uh, in other places, but we get them from social media, articles, books, which, we, which are often quite technical. And um, sometimes it's just not that easy to find all the information available. And uh, I think it would be interesting if we could just sit together with uh, enterprises, towns, whatever, uh, who are experimenting with the, with the four-day work week or even less, so that we can really learn from each other and perhaps communicate them in a, to the big world uh, in, on a not so technical way. I don't know if I'm explaining myself well. <laughs> okay, but Makes then sense. I really only can invite you join our European network uh, more uh, frequently and uh, use the European newsletter of, uh, uh, on working time reduction. Maybe, uh, Adrien, you could put it again in the chat, the link uh, to get this um, newsletter, because this is exactly what we are doing. We try to connect people from all uh, at the moment only 15, but in general we, uh, we uh, uh, have the goal to have every uh, European country uh, to bring them together who making anything with working time reduction and to exchange their experiences and how to look how to go uh, coordinate it uh, uh, forward. Hmm? Okay, then I have a last question is local government the best way to trial working time reduction and then to make it spread? Hmm. I have to do admit I don't know. It, it's a bit different because of course, when you implement it in enterprises, enterprises basically care about making money and productivity and perhaps they would implement it in a more professional way i don't know just to be sure that the productivity would increase um what is crucial for us and for the employers on a public scale is that the well of course to the employer side that productivity increases but just to also to be able to um to um to offer a better public service service to the public, um, beneficial or economical rendement is less important on the public side mm -hmm. uh, instead of, instead of uh, with enterprises. So I honestly don't know, perhaps, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, public uh, trials in the public sector are a great way to um, spread knowledge and uh, kind of um, raise awareness that this is possible um, and how to do it. Maybe spread information on the practicalities. Um, I don't know how well it spreads into the private sector unless through contracts or by law. Uh, I think it can be challenging to get private companies to voluntarily try this out on a large scale. I think there's some kind of social force that's needed there. But I think this is a Public trials are a good way to raise awareness, I think. Mm -hmm. From judging from our experience here, <laughs> anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, do you know what uh, what type of workplaces and jobs were eligible in in uh, for example, also nurses or teachers or um, here in Iceland. Yeah. So um, the city of Reykjavik uh, runs uh, maintenance centers for streets, lights, um, they, um, gardens, they run uh, play schools, they, um, and uh, care centers for people that um, need some kind of assistance, so disabled or have some kind of 
pro social problems. Uh, there are general service centers, and all of these were eligible. They could all join. Uh, the city does not run a primary school or, or any or any school on a higher level. That's government. Um, and the city generally does not r run healthcare facilities. That's a state. So, um, so in the in the city trial, these could not join. They were out out of scope. Um, but all you know, play schools um, could join. The maintenance centers could. So it includes um, schools and uh, maintenance and and so forth. Uh, on a government level. However, the, uh, these uh, healthcare centers could join uh, schools, etc. To my knowledge, uh, they, they did not, they were either not selected or did not apply. I'm not sure. Uh, there was a lot of interest, though. Mm -hmm. um, should, well, and there was one hospital department that did join, so nurses would be included there and doctors. I mm -hmm. hope that explains. Okay. So, um i think now we have to close this first panel i thank you everybody very much for your conferences and also for the questions and now we will have a break um up to uh 4 30 so you have half an hour um to drink coffee or do uh, whatever you want and then we will come together to the second panel, the place of the working time reduction in a post-growth society. Yeah, have a good break. <laughs>